I have 40 children in my school. Most of them subsist on a handful of food a day. Two or more will die of malnutrition within the year. When we hear about your amazing achievements, a man on the moon plans to go to Mars. But how can you justify the expenditure of great sums of money going into space at a time when children are starving to death? Dear Sister Jacunda, I am deeply touched by your letter. It comes from a searching mind and a compassionate heart. How absurd our ventures into outer space must seem to you who have dedicated your life to helping those in need. To answer your question, let me tell you a story I heard several years ago. A true story. Sometime in the 16th century, there lived a count in a town in Germany. He was a benevolent man and he gave a large part of his wealth to the poor because poverty was prevalent and the plague ravaged the countryside. One day the Count met a jeweler who in his spare time ground small lenses from pieces of glass. The Count was fascinated by the world that could be observed through these pieces of glass. He invited the man to move to the castle to devote all his time to the perfection of his optical devices. The townspeople were angry saying, why are you wasting money on such foolishness while we are dying from the plague? The Count replied, I give you most of what I have, but I will save a small portion to support this man's work because it gives us a new way of seeing that could open up new truths. We don't know where it will lead, but someday good will come of it. And it did. Out of it came the microscope which has contributed more than any other invention to the progress of medicine, including the elimination of the plague. Three, two, one, liftoff. Liftoff of Columbia and the first flight of the European Space Agency's space lab. As the microscope unlocked the secrets of disease, space offers a scientific gold mine we've barely begun to tap. Because the absence of gravity gives us a new way of seeing that can open up new truths. Space is a, a totally new world. Everything floats. It changes the way everything reacts, even your body, how it operates, right down to the interaction of the atoms and molecules. As a fighter pilot, I know what it's like when you go into a hard high G turn and move your head. The whole world seems to go topsy-turvy. So I became interested in studying the inner ear system, the vestibular system, your organs of balance. I became an astronaut to do experiments on the space shuttle in the inner ear system, and we got some really great results. My interest is in bone physiology. I want to know what makes a bone grow and why we lose bone as we get older. My grandmother had osteoporosis, and during the last years of her life, she broke several bones. What causes that? It would be very easy to isolate the cause if we didn't have the complicating factors of aging and disease. When there's no gravity, healthy people lose bone. So the astronauts actually lose bone while they're in space flight. Space is a perfect place to study bone regulation, bone loss, and to give us some clues as to how to reverse this effect. Our mission was NASA's very first dedicated medical mission, but we only had nine days to collect data. The big problem is time's hard to come by on the shuttle. You get maybe seven to ten days every couple of years. We really need a permanent space laboratory. Science progresses step by step. It's very slow. We take very careful and repeated measurements. What we need is a science laboratory in space.
proteins are the basic building blocks of life. They determine the way that all living systems work, ranging from viruses through plants up to the entire human body. And in diseases such as cancer, AIDS, arthritis, diabetes, it's proteins that have gone haywire that we need to understand the way that they operate so that we can intervene by designing new types of treatment against these diseases. In order to do any of this though, we need to be able to grow crystals of these proteins and to use those crystals for structural study. On Earth, it's very difficult to do this, but in space, in the absence of gravity, we can grow crystals that are much more perfect. And we can use those crystals to understand these very basic processes. There are many different ways that proteins are involved in living systems. They're major components of food. And by understanding the structures of these, we can begin to engineer new types of proteins that, that can provide nutrition to developing countries in the future. Basically, we're talking about work that's at the very heart of life, at the very cutting edge of the science of biology. Space offers great promise for making new and better materials. Plastics that are a lot stronger, uh, silicon chips with unique electrical properties. This is because a lot of materials are made by melting various uh, substances together and mixing them and then solidifying them again. When you mix different liquids on Earth, the heavier ones sink to the bottom. Also, when they're solidifying, gravity distorts them with the flow we call convection. We've been able to create perfect spheres in space on earlier shuttle missions because settling and convection are absent in space. We are experimenting with inserting dyes into small polymer spheres to create the smallest lasers imaginable. We're also working on organic films and, and crystals uh, that could, could lead to computers that operate solely and purely on light. They'd be faster, um, store more information, and take up uh, less space than any currently possible. These are just a few examples. There are many possibilities, known and unknown, that simply await careful planning, opportunity, and our unlimited imaginations. Many parts of the human body are tremendously affected by the absence of gravity in spaceflight. Your heart gets smaller, you lose blood volume, you lose muscle mass. By studying these changes in how the heart and the lungs operate in weightlessness, how the body controls blood pressure and, and blood volume, and how the immune system gets suppressed, we've already found similarities to several diseases like hypertension, congestive heart failure, diabetes. The people we monitor are very healthy when they launch, and the changes they go through happen very rapidly. We figure that, that given the right laboratory environment and space, we can learn a lot of things about these disease processes. And those kind of insights we can acquire will tell us things about the kind of treatments that can be used against these diseases on the ground. Animal and plant studies will help us understand even more about living organisms, including the process of aging and better ways to grow more nourishing food. And these are only a few of the many studies that will be undertaken on this International Scientific Laboratory and just a hint of what might come of them. The Japanese, the Europeans, the Canadians, the Americans were all working together to build the station because we have a common belief that the absence of gravity is very important scientifically and that it's the first step toward manned exploration of the solar system. It's this exploration that may provide the Earth with resources that are being depleted or are difficult to find. Each country has its own specific goals, but we all know that we've entered a new era, one of global consciousness, and that international cooperation is necessary to improve and maybe even preserve life on our planet. The space station is the first physical embodiment of this new realization. It's being built to provide international solutions to global problems. How can 
you spend money going into space when children are starving? Children will starve until we find a solution. And it's only by investing in scientific research that we have a hope of finding real solutions to Earth's problems. And space is a key scientific environment. We must learn from history to invest in the future. Space gives us a new way of seeing that will open up new truths. We can't predict all the discoveries it holds, but we know it can improve our children's future. And if we care wisely, we'll give them freedom to discover the now hidden answers that lie beyond the Earth, beyond the station, in the laboratories of the universe.